shit happens. You know, you you move on. That's 2022. This is 2023. We're not in Austin for this game. We're going to be Alabama, and we're going to wipe the floor with Alabama. Go Longhorns. Hook them horns, baby. All about the balls podcast. With Mark Davis, Chris Kameinhart, Luke Rule, and Nick the Doc Skirkowitz. Hello and welcome to All About the Falls Podcast. I'm Mark Davis and I'm in the fucking sack house ready to talk college football week two preview one week one recap. I'm joined alongside your local UCF boy Luke Rule. Shout out. Love the jacket. How to be explained what that was. Doc, our local FSU fanboy in the sack house and Chris. Our Go Tigers. LSU Tigers fan who they will be on the upcoming back. They're back. I think it's going to happen, Chris. This week, they got to get that win. I, I feel it in my bones. How are you doing, Chris? They're going to, I'm doing great. They're definitely going to get that dub. But yeah. I <laughs> Chris, do you, Chris, do you, Chris, do you need a chaplain? <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I actually talked to my chaplain today for a little okay. bit. Okay. Uh, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Screen. Reach out, man. Don't hold that shit in. Reach out. Who's LSU yeah. playing though? So the, the viewers know that, so we know it's a guaranteed dub. Grambling State. Oh, <laughs> Grambling State's tough, dude. You they, might want to watch out. Yeah. They have the same oh, logo no. as Georgia. They have that G, but they're not the Georgia Bulldogs. That's for sure. So they, they Luke, don't have the super senior at court. They do not either. have. Yeah. Well, or or the handsome Carson Beck neither. That's a handsome fellow out there at Georgia University. So you might you might want to call the chaplain and just invite him over to the game just in case. <laughs> Just have Luke, I know you're just, just, Luke, just know you're, BK talking about the game beforehand again. <laughs> well, he could probably guarantee this win. I, I guarantee he, he can win this one. Oh, he, he was pretty confident about FSU. He was. I mean, he also I y'all also don't know shit about the interview. It wasn't like a podium interview. It was him at a fucking bar that he does every week with a bunch of guys. Yeah. So it wasn't so, like a formal interview. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Oh, okay. Yeah. He was drunk. He was drunk when he so, said so it was it was true awards. I mean, it wasn't like he's fucking saying it to the press, you know, saying hey, no, he, said it to the back out. he said it to the press. He said it on recording. No, he didn't say it to the press because nobody there was at the press. <laughs> it, like I said, it was, it was at a bar with two other guys. Recorded? cover at LSU. That well, recorded. anyway, anyways, he said it. I mean, obviously, every coach is going to think that they were going to win. That's just the way it goes. Luke, you have big energy. game. UCF, Boise State, how you feeling going into college this week? Yeah, feeling good. Uh, UCF always struggles on the road in Boise, but see if they can get it done this year on the on the blue field. Yeah, so. I mean, they Boise is coming off a tough loss, so you guys yeah. should easily win this game. Like, yeah. I don't think any question at all. I mean, I would say easily, but Hope, hopefully another blowout game. That's kind of my expectations. And Doc, blowout games too for you guys as well. You guys are playing Southern Miss. How you feeling coming into week two? You know, following that. Huge, huge win out there in uh, Orlando. Oh, dude, we dropped a fucking log right on LSU. If you think I'm worried about <laughs> what was this, Southern Miss? Come on. Southern, who, yeah. Who the fuck is that? Damn, yeah, George Travis probably benched at halftime when they're probably up 35 <laughs> points. End of the so. first. Come on, end of the first. Uh, that fucking receiver was was nasty, dude. Yeah, that that uh, well, we're gonna talk about them in a minute. But that tall, that tall kid, uh, he had a couple drops. I forgot his name already. You um, can't catch the easy balls. You can't catch easy balls, but damn sure you make a uh, tough Did he throw catch there. the ones that mattered? Yeah, he, uh, he, he was. He, well, Keon he dropped, Coleman, he baby. Some... Keon Coleman, three touchdowns. Well, that wasn't the guy I'm talking about. I'm talking about the, yeah. the second receiver on the team. That, he's taller. No, he's fucking nasty. Col- Coleman came from Mississippi State, or Michigan right. State, I'm sorry. And then the other hey. guy came from Arizona State a couple years ago. And Watson or something like that? It was Wilson. It was Johnny Wilson. Wilson. Yeah. I love yeah. the name though, Johnny Wilson. He, he, had, then, he had some he had some third down drops, like easy third down drops. He did. I was watching yeah. the first half of that game, and I was I was screaming in a restaurant. Uh, the cops almost got called. It was terrible. Uh, <laughs> there was some seriously aggressive moments. Um, drinks were flying. Silver was flying. <laughs> it was it was not a good time. It worked out for you though, Doc. And that's probably how I might be feeling that same way this weekend. Texas is playing Alabama, so. I feel good. I felt great last year coming into the game. I, I really – I was more confident last year than I was this year, even though Alabama was, was more talented in my opinion. But we lost by one point. It's a revenge game. We're going to go to Alabama. We haven't been there over 100 years. So, I'm excited. We're diving into that game as well. But, Chris, I start with you. LSU, Clemson took a, a tough loss too. We're going to break them down in a few minutes because tie these two teams together. 
both Tigers did not look too hot the games. But how worried should LSU be? I know you still have to play Arkansas, Alabama, Auburn, Florida, you know, Texas A&M. You have a pretty decent schedule still. Are you worried as an LSU fan, or do you think you boys get it back, run the table, may make a little noise? Yeah, I mean, I could I could probably talk this whole podcast about what LSU could do better. I mean, it was definitely an embarrassing loss. I mean, going three for 10 on third downs, zero for three on fourth downs. I mean, it was tough. We definitely definitely got out coached. I mean, I, mean, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck Matt House was doing with Harold Perkins, but I mean, Harold Perkins pretty much shut down fucking Bryce Young last year against Alabama. I don't know what Matt House was thinking with his game plan and scheming with Harold Perkins, but he looked lost in the sauce fucking Sunday. It was rough. I mean, I said to the in the preview podcast that the big thing about LSU is going to be their secondary. They don't have a rough – they don't have a good secondary this year. And, I mean, it definitely mm-hmm. proved in that second half. Hopefully, rumor is Denver mm-hmm. Harris is available to play this weekend. So, I mean, that will be a big guy to get back out there in the boundary corner. So, I had an, I had an issue, though, with that. So, the, the first fourth down, love it. Set the tone. I get it. You don't get it. You know, that happens. But the second fourth down, I unfortunately I disagree with Brian Kelly. you got to kick the field goal. Go for the points. It, it just – the momentum was there for Florida State to, to continue what they were doing. If you take the points, we never know what Florida State's going to do. If you guys not get to, you're going to get it. But going for it well, twice I'm on pretty, fourth down again, shut down both times, just to me was I'm bad. pretty sure. So, I mean, the first one was just fucking a mess. I'm pretty sure the second yeah. one, if if we're thinking correctly, I mean, after half – after they – Florida State went up fucking – a lot. Scored 10 in the th- third. I fucking went to sleep because I had to wake up a couple hours to drive home. But you gotta look quiet think, on the, sh- in the text <laughs> messages. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty what? sure. I'm pretty sure the second fourth down would have been picked up if JD, because it was pretty much like an RPO. JD could have ran it, gave it off to the running back, or passed it. And the running gap was open for the running back, but JD kept it. I think JD was trying to do too much. I think he was in his head. I think the one was the was into the half though, Chris. That's what I'm thinking of. Going into the half for you guys. Yeah. I mean, you, you gotta give credit to the, the Florida State uh defensive line. Like mm. that that first fourth down, like that that was their fifth or sixth play within like the three yard line that they were able to stop LSU. LSU ran the ball like four times up the middle and Florida State stopped them every single time. It's not happening, dude. Yeah, no holes here. Uh, the Florida State defensive line was a unit against, like they are living in the LSU backfield the entire game. Well, you got to give Brian Kelly credit uh, going into week two. I mean, after the comments uh, prior to the FSU game, you know, he really he really walked it back for for Grambling. Uh, just pulled up the matchup on ESPN and the, the video right at the top. LSU's Kelly shows respect for Grambling ahead of week two. <laughs> you got to respect them, man. You got to respect the opponent now. <laughs> No, but I mean, it's good to see Florida State, and I know Doc can ha- harp are like really hammer this down. It's like when Florida State was so good for those many years under Bobby Bowden and, and then Jimbo Fisher, the defense was a fucking unit, like you mentioned, Luke. Not just the D line, but all three you know tiers of the defense, and that's what it looks like to have a Florida State similar like team back. Great offense mixed with that great defense, and they can go a long way. But to go back to LSU, Boy, it feels good. I, I don't know if LSU season's completely over. Like I said. They do have a pretty decent schedule left. We don't know what is Al- what Alabama is going to be towards the end of the season. We don't really have a high respect with the Gators. A&M, they're ranked for now. We weren't really high on them coming to the season. So Auburn's always tough to play, and, and so is Ole Miss. Or, I mean, sorry, Arkansas and Ole Miss, too. You guys play Ole Miss as well. So it's a pretty tough schedule for the LSU Tigers, and you guys will have a chance to get momentum with these couple of these, these cupcake games. But – I don't know, man. Like, I'm not as high on LSU. I didn't have in the playoffs anyways. I think y'all were a solid 9 or 10 win team. And maybe that's what you guys are. I mean, it's, it's going to go all to the coaching. What can do to change? What can Matt House do? What can Mike Denbrock do offensively? And then what can JD do as a quarterback? I mean, he – fuck, he missed, he missed a couple good ones that he could have had. Also, I don't know who was fucking playing these offensive play calls. I mean – pass you open it up have trey bradford have a receptor for 55 yards and then don't even ever pass a trey bradford again like shit was crazy and we had a couple 
couple key drops on third down. So we'll see. Doc, do you do you regret having LSU in your your final four now, or you, you think they can still swing the momentum back their way and you know run the table and run, win the SEC still? No, I, I mean, know it's only definitely... week one. It's overreaction. It's overreaction, you know, fucking week one, essentially. No, I mean, it is overreaction, you know, and it is. They, they played a good Florida State team. The defense showed up. Um, the offense was phenomenal when it needed to be. You know, you're going to have rough quarters, rough halves, but, I mean, they came out when they needed to, strong fourth quarter. Um, you know, they made the plays happen when they needed to. But, I mean, do I think LSU – I mean, LSU still has all the potential to make the playoffs. You know what I mean? But I think LSU was exposed for a lot in this game. Um so, you know, it's like Chris said, the coaching's got to come together, got to tighten it up. And if they do, I mean, absolutely, they can make it. They can 100% get back into the top four, get into the playoffs. But, you know, there, there's going to have to be some drastic changes in, in execution. You got to change it up. You, you can't be running five, six plays from inside the three and, and losing it. Yeah, they yeah, only throw the number 14. So, like, like you said, they have a shot still to get back to a good spot later on. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the biggest thing is that we got – we lost to FSU, which I think – it's about to be have a phenomenal fucking year. I mean, Clemson, we're going to cover them. They don't look like they're going to be doing too good in the ACC. So, I mean, Florida State's probably going to run through that and get high a high playoff seed. So, I mean. Clemson got LSU exposed does, even more. Yeah, yeah. If LSU does, which it's going to be rough with that secondary, if they do run through the SEC, they have a solid shot on making it <clears> losing to probably going to be a number one or two seed in the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and we'll see because, like you said, I mean, we all we think all roads lead to Georgia for the SEC West to, to play the SEC East, which is we think is gonna be Georgia. But Georgia's kind of slows a little sluggish coming out the gate, the gates too. But we're not gonna really mention them today. That they didn't have anything to really talk about. But yeah, Luke, I don't know, man. LSU, yeah. all eyes are on them. I know. I, hey, I said it. I said it in our uh, playoff predictions. I, I had Florida State running the table if they beat LSU. You know, like, by the looks of it, I. They have a very good chance to run the table now. Uh, Clemson looked weak. Uh, they do got to play Duke though, so uh, Duke and Duke, yeah. Duke played them tough. So yeah. other than that, like they have Miami and Florida, and that's that's about it for a somewhat like tough games. I think Pitt, so, in-state Pitt's rivalries. Decent. Pitt's decent. Like yeah. they could they could compete with defense, but, but that's about it. But if they play every week like they played last week, they'll, they'll run the table pretty easily, and they'll. They'll guarantee themselves as the top four slot. So as Florida State, the real deal. Like I was a little, I was a little upset, Luke. That I mean, I was talking to my coworkers. I was, when I saw the rankings came out. I was a little pissed for Florida State. They put Alabama number four, and I'm sorry. I think that it should be the other way around. I think that, or sorry, they put them at number three. They, they put them at three. I thought Florida State should jump Bama, and Bama should have stayed at four. Florida State had a way more impressive win there, and that that, that opens the door. Is Florida State the real deal? Or do they just take advantage of what looked like a sloppy LSU team in the second half? Yeah, I, I don't understand how the AP polls are picked. Uh, just I think it's just yeah. some guys throwing fucking darts at the wall. Because <laughs> based based off what they've seen, I thought it was supposed to be based off what they've seen this season. But I mean, yeah, I mean, I would have a Florida State from, from what you've seen this, from so far this season. Florida State should be the first team. Like, yeah, but there's no way you jump Georgia and Michigan. I mean, I know they didn't play hard teams like LSU, but I, I, they I didn't you do should, anything. I think you should earn those spots, though. It's not just given. See, so, maybe you I, shouldn't have a rankings. Maybe you shouldn't have a rankings to start the season, and then yeah, you go from fair. there. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, Chris, uh, I know Doc's gonna feel a little different. I mean, I think he was a little worried about the LSU game, but his Florida State back. It, it did Mike, what Mike Norvell, Nor, Nor, yeah, Norvell. Did, Norvell. Did he finally start building this this uh, once so franchise, uh, you know, big dynasty? After Willie Taggart burned to the ground, did he finally <laughs> build it up to, to his standards and, and future standards for this this city of Tallahassee? I, I think yeah, he I mean, has. Oh, okay. 100% yeah. he has. 100% yeah, he yeah. has. And, and this, this, this ex- exceeded the expectation by years. I mean, I wasn't expecting for this to happen for another couple of years. And he came in completely rebuilt, changed up the recruiting, brought in some real heavy guys. The transfer portal played huge for us this year, um, as you saw in that game against LSU. Um so I, I think this team definitely can be the real deal. But, um, you know, I, I still, as a Seminole fan, I've seen some rough losses in my days against, you know, teams that should have been guaranteed wins. Um, so I still have a little bit of question mark. But seeing them come together the way that they did, I mean, I would love to love to keep riding that momentum and keep it going. But, um, you know, we got an easy game coming up this week. 
you know, I, I think our biggest challenge is going to be Clemson. Uh, Miami is always a hot game. Florida is always a hot game. So, um, you know, a couple of roadblocks ahead. But, you know, show, if, they, if they play how they did this week, you know, maybe a little bit better in the first half, maybe – Maybe uh, stop catching with brick hands. I think that uh, this team is, this team can be unstoppable. Yeah, yeah Chris, I mean, they Jordan, see back to Florida State. Yeah, Jordan Travis is looking phenomenal going into his sixth year. I mean, it's it's time for him to ball out. He's looking good. He's <laughs> what a shot! Hey. What a fucking shot, Adam. <laughs> I mean, hey, it's the truth. I mean, he is going into sixth year, so he has a lot of college football under his belt. I mean, he has a lot of experience over what some of these other guys he's going to go against. I mean, like uh, Doc said, the transfer reporter's big. Keon Coleman, I mean, hey, he made LSU pay for Coach O not going out and recruiting him. I mean, he's a Louisiana boy, so, I mean, that even hurt even harder this mm. game. Yeah. So. Mm, mm, big mm. steal from Michigan State. Like, you know, he grabbed him from the Spartans. So, I mean, I like, but that's that's the way the game is now, transfer portal. And I think Florida State, like Doc says, hand, they are hitting on the, the transfer portal pretty good. And they built the the, the program back up, it seems like. I mean, Clemson's going to be tough just because it's at Clemson. It'll probably be a night game or, worst case, 330 game. Still pretty pretty good time frame. So, we don't know how we are on Clemson yet. I mean, what we saw, what we saw but still Clemson at Clemson. It's a very tough place to play. Very tough place to play, yeah, but I don't know. Klubnik got, Klubnik got fucking exposed, man. That guy played like dog shit. Um, I mean, just easy plays over the middle, just could not connect. Um, I, I don't know what the deal was, you know, um, Clemson just as a whole. And, and Duke is not – I mean, I'm not saying Duke isn't good, um, but that's that's not how – Duke should not have manhandled them the way they did. I mean, that just became garbage time football at the end of the game. Um, so, you know, Clemson Clemson can still – you know, the potential still there, but they, again, just like LSU, they got to tighten it up. So, I, I think, though, I think this is Florida State's conference. Uh, ACC is back to Florida State, at least for this season. Um, so very excited to to ride this one out. And Florida State can be and Ohio State too. They can be the first or the two teams that start the the uh, playoff with four teams and end the playoff with four teams. So it's looking good. Florida State getting back in there. Uh, we we keep hammering Clemson boys. Fucking Duke put them out to the woodshed and old yellowed their ass twenty eight to seven. They stormed the field. You know, probably Duke's biggest win in college football. Duke wasn't a bad school last year. I think they had eight wins. So it's not like Duke's ho- was horrible last year. But like, like y'all said, they shouldn't just go out there and manhandle and maybe like squeak out a win. But how worried should we be about Clemson? They fell from nine to twenty-five. I think you've got to be worried. I mean, the offense didn't even come out and play. Leonard had one hundred and seventy-five yards, uh, ninety-eight on the ground rushing, uh, which is really. You know, made some big plays, but Jordan Waters, I mean, uh, there was more big, big averages from over five yards in average, but 63 and 43 respectively. So they didn't even have the numbers offensively to really justify 28 points against against that Clemson defense. But um, I mean, I guess just making the right plays at the right time. Um, I fell asleep watching the game on the plane on the way back, woke up towards the end, so I did not see the whole game. So I don't know if penalties were a big part of it, but turnovers um, too. They 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 had a Oh yeah, Clemson fumbled. fumbled like four times, didn't they? Yeah. They fumbled right in the like the like the goal to goal essentially and they had a couple that's why the de- Yeah, the defense for Duke got them all the way That's to the right. Side. I did I did see that I did see that highlight. Uh I'm not was, putting the game on the that defense. That was damn near this the ninety was- yard return. Yeah, this wasn't on the defense at all. Clemson's defense still looked pretty good. Yeah, they had some moments where they had some blunders, but the offense put them in bad spots too. So, I mean, I feel bad for Will Shipley. I mean, I think it's time for him to get the hell Solid out of there. Game for this him, year. Dude. Solid game for him. 17 for 114. He ran yeah, all I mean, over him. Klubnik, Klub- Klub- Klubnik looked bad. That's that's who it's he's, all he's got to do. He's got to do better against a secondary like Duke, man. Uh, 27 to 43, 209 yards, only a 4.9 average. That was the most embarrassing part. Um, honestly, I'm shocked he came down with only one pick. I mean, there were a couple plays that I did see that that were that were primed for interception that you know got deflected the wrong way or somebody stepped up in front, but um. Yeah, there there was a lot of hype going in for for Klebnik this year, and honestly, I think he got exposed. I think it's very clear right now that he is not the man for Clemson. Um, so, going to be interesting to see what happens, you know, in the next game. But a twenty seven point nine QBR, baby. Fuck Chris Clemson. looks. Chris looks like you're right though. If you don't have Deshaun Watson, and Trevor Lawrence, it sure looks like hell for Dabo Sweeney. Yeah, I mean Clemson. Hey, it was a 
I didn't watch too much of it because, like I said, I woke up like one o'clock that morning, had to drive, <laughs> yeah. so my ass was fucking crashed early. But I mean, it was a close game. It was what 13, 13 7 after the third, and then Duke pulled away in the fourth, scoring 15. I mean, um, who what's his name garrett riley he he's coming over from tcu he was supposed to spark the offense for the clemson tigers this year it did not did not yeah. pan out the way they wanted to to start the season i mean like debo said i mean they had every chance to control this game throughout the game and they just they couldn't do it and they have two cupcake games to get ready for florida state so they have they have a couple games, like a couple like preseason games, essentially to get ready for that that tough game against the Seminoles. Luke, you're down on the Tigers too, I'm assuming, right? Yeah, I mean that, that's a that's a tough loss. Like I honestly, I wasn't even going to plan on watching the game because I just assumed Clemson would blow them out. And I saw I saw at halftime that like, Clemson was down. I'm like, oh, I should I should probably turn this game on. And <laughs> hey, some it, this could be just a thing. Like Duke just had the hot hand. Like they just came ready. And Clemson just came into the game sleeping. Like, they just didn't come ready to play like Duke did. And, like, I mean, Duke, Duke's a solid team. Like, they're not – they're not, like, no – like, walk in the park. But still, Clemson should have fucking owned Duke that night. And Duke just wanted more. And you saw that late in the game when Duke just started putting it on them. And I, I guess like, you saw his – you saw his fans on a Monday night just Ooh. fucking go. Oh, dude, crazy. they were loaded up five minutes before the end of the game. Yeah, they, yeah. They, were on, they were on the field before <laughs> before there was two minutes still left in the game. Yeah, they, they were lined they up were, on the sideline, too. I'm shocked yeah. they were even able to get that close to the field. They were fucking right up on there. Yeah, they – they yeah. and there's a lot of – and there's a lot of Clemson fans there to start the game, too, and then they obviously dipped out in the fourth quarter. So, very shocked. I mean, very good showing, though, for the Clemson fans. Shout, shout out to them. But, boys, I think the next topic is something that is probably, like Chris says – do not let this fucking team win week one because the media will blow up. Social media might fucking blow up. And no, it wasn't a might. Twitter, or sorry, X, Facebook, Instagram, all of it. TikTok was all behind Colorado. Coach Primetime had the offense clicking. The defense still needs a little work besides Travis Hunter. But Shador Sanders fucking killed it over 500 yards in his debut in a Power 5 game against – Yes, TCU, who made it to the championship game last year, not the same TCU team, obviously. But, Chris, is this all hype, or or is this going to be like how it is all year for Colorado? They're going to put up big points, and they're just going to hope their defense can just do enough at the end of the games. Well, I mean, uh, look, there was no defense throughout this whole entire fucking game. It was, it was all offense. And, I mean, hey, Colorado came out. They looked solid. I – TCU did lose a couple key players, but I mean their offense looked like they were still clicking. I mean that I don't know if that's because Colorado's defense is bad or Colorado's defense just didn't show up. But I'm excited to see what Colorado does. I mean, they looking at their schedule, they do not have a very difficult schedule. So the chance well, of Oregon, them just uh, that the, the not easy. At Oregon is going to be tough because that is a defensive game. Like well, Oregon plays defense. They're lucky they don't play the Huskies because they play offense and defense. So does Oregon. Okay. But I also got USC. And that Utah. game might be uh, but, that you. But again, that USC game is going to be in the eighties. Yeah, that's going to be again, 80, USC, eighty-five, eighty. No defense there with yeah. USC. <laughs> it's going to be all Madden game. Turn mm-hmm. turn the defense sliders down and. Just let the fucking off. That's it's gonna be all offense, I think, with USC and that. I mean, stadium I, in Colorado for that game is gonna be fucking packed again for USC. Yeah, I think their hardest game this season is gonna be Oregon. I mean, USC. It's gonna be a blowout. Who can score the last? Just like the TCU game was coming. I mean, they do play Oregon State and then Utah in the season, but Utah didn't look too hot either against going against Florida. So they they had their backup QB playing. So. The backup QB that was supposed to start anyway, so. I don't think he was. Cam Rising's been their starter the last, last few well, years. Chris means, like, he was already planning on starting. Like he was, he he was, was practicing playing. with the ones. It wasn't like oh. he was just throwing in their last yeah. second. Did, has they even said why Cam Rising didn't play? Yeah, he tore his – he, he got hurt in the Rose Bowl. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the backup was starting this whole offseason. He was oh. running with the ones. There's, I, I thought it was just a last Rising's, decision. No, 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 they're saying Rising's gonna miss a few games. Yeah, oh, Rising's right. supposed to miss the first like month or whatever. 
No, this was, yeah, this I was mean, definitely I... an exciting game to watch. I mean, I don't want to take credit from Colorado because Colorado played a great game. Uh, Shader Sanders came out uh, more yards offensively than Colorado in the last 29 games. I mean, to do that single-handedly, I mean, you, you can't take away from that. And honestly, props, 38 of 47 passing, 510 yards. I mean, an impressive average of 10.9. Four scores, no picks. I'm not really sure how they figure the QBR on this. I'll, I don't think I'll ever understand it because he only had a 90.6, which I think is kind of wild, according to ESPN. But um, at the same time, I don't want to. I don't want to jump on the Colorado train just yet because uh, TCU, even while playing extremely well offensively, only had like 15% of their starters return offensively. Um, I don't know what the percentage was defensively. Obviously, there's a lot of question marks in the secondary for TCU's defense, but. Um, they were one of the team. I mean, uh, but between them and Colorado, I mean, these were two of the teams that had the most turnover um, in the portal, you know, or, or players leaving um, in the off season this year for college football and Colorado. I, I don't know the exact numbers. How many guys came over from Jackson state um, who got fucking stomped on yeah. this year. But I mean, if that's the case, you've got guys that have already been playing together where TCU, you know, brought in a lot of new faces. So um you know, obviously, obviously you got to count for that. But again, I want to take from Colorado's offense. They played a phenomenal game. Defense sucked on both sides of the ball, obviously. Um, so I think uh, I think Colorado is, is going to have an exciting season. I think it's going to be fun to watch, but I think that they're going to get put in their place, like you said, against teams like Oregon, USC, Washington, or Utah. Um, you know, a, a lot of big well, time, a lot of a lot of explosive Pac- offenses coming up against them. Pac-12 is legit. I mean, it sucks that they're oh, Pac- banned yeah, now. Then they're all even. Yeah, they're finally a fucking they conference. They're, they're finally relevant again, and they're and they're breaking up. Yeah, yeah for the, yeah. For the last they're year. all they were undefeated in week one. But Doc, you you know you mentioned that whole like the stats of what Shador Sanders did. The other stat too. They last year they had two guys get 100 receiving yards in the game like throughout the whole season. They had four in one game. Yeah, guys at 100, 100 yeah. yards. That's phenomenal. Travis being Hunter. able to spread the ball like that and, 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 and get people involved is a huge part of the offense because you don't have that one target that's going to get double teamed and shut down your entire your entire offense. You know what I mean? Like having having the targets across the field is huge. So again, I mean, shout out to Colorado, great offensive game. But you know, the the, the key right now is going to be: is it going to continue? Are they going to be able to keep up this pace against all the different, you know, all the tough defense they're going to play? They're playing a lot of explosive offenses in this league. And I'm going to tell you right now, if they're going score for score, I don't think their offense is keeping up with with established programs such as Oregon, uh, Utah, USC. I think that I think it's going to be there, there, there's going to be a hard learning moment. But even if that's the case, I mean, Colorado came out with a huge win in week one. Um, you can't be mad at that. And if that's a building block to to start getting to being that known that known name in the conference, then fuck it. Send it and and build. Well, and I, mean, I know I forgot. That's yeah, the big thing with Dion. I mean, Sanders is just trying to get people to buy in right now. I mean, they're not looking to go undefeated this season. They're not looking to oh, I mean, as much as that's they not what he says. Well, I mean, clearly you want to make the playoffs, you wanna you wanna be undefeated. But I think realistically, your big thing for your year one is to get your players to buy in, get other people from other teams to buy in with this transfer portal, and let's fucking make Colorado something big. And I'm definitely buying in. I'm just not. I'm just not Colorado's going to the playoffs. You know what I mean? I'm not. I'm not there yeah. yet. I got to see. Yeah. I got to see consistent performance. I got to see this defense yeah. get better. Because honestly, yeah. um, well, I what did T, how did TCU run the ball? Because their their passing wasn't that impressive. Um, Morris, 2442, 279 yards, a pair of touchdowns and picks, both. Um, I mean, Bailey did a hell of a job running the ball, 14 for 164. I mean, that's that's impressive numbers. So, yeah. It was their rush defense. They're, but we, I don't know about you guys, but I definitely forgot. Travis Hunter, he was the number one prospect coming when he was coming into college. He chose Jackson State because of primetime. He says that I'm the same player as coach primetime, only he can coach me because. No one else was going to let him play offense. They only wanted him to play corner. And we saw what he could do. He played 144 snaps. Now, can he do that all year long? Well, we're going to see what that can – It's going to take that's a phenomenal. toll. Yeah. It's going to take yeah, a toll. That's, what, that's why Coach won't, Coach Prime won't let him practice until Wednesday. He's trying to tone down his, like, schedule, but he gets bored. He wants to play practice, I said. He wants to be out there the whole time. And, yeah, he looked a little gas at the end, but when the whistle was done, too, it looked like he was still fresh. I mean, he was a dog. Yeah. That interception, yeah. that was a great interception, too. But it's yeah, just that he, one he, moment he, where he, fatigue sets in and you get turned around and lose that fucking deep ball by TCU at the end of the game that can cost you the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, he, he still played a hell of a game, though. Like He had a couple of big oh, drops yeah. on offense that would have set him up. I think like, he had two touchdowns he dropped, at least one that I saw. 
Well, he had one and, dropped, and then one was underthrown, hit the guy in the helmet yeah. for TC. But yeah, that one he dropped in the corner was a perfect throw by Sanders. And yeah. I mean, it's still chemistry. You know? I mean, they have chemistry, but it's still it. like. Dude, yeah, dog, still, the guy's a dog, played, though. Playing both ways. Like, when was the last time I somebody really played both ways, like the entire game? Prime time. Yeah. Prime time. <laughs> like, that's at least, like, at least one I can remember. But. No, I mean, I, I'm excited to see it. I'm excited to see the Pac-12, too. I mean, like Colorado, like like you said, the second uh, week in a row there on the, the big noon kickoff against Nebraska, yeah. old rivalry between Nebraska and Colorado. But Colorado yeah. Boulder's going to be packed in there, and it's going to be loud. Yeah. And yeah, Nebraska is finally. Like, if but... Travis Hunter plays like that fucking every week, he's a shoe in for the Heisman, too. Right? No doubt about it. If he plays both ways the entire Can... season and plays well on both sides of the ball, Easy to be a co Heisman. Can they both win co Heisman? Him and Sanders together? No, yeah. but if you play I know, both players, I, think, I, think you, I think that's what the point of the Heisman is. The best player overall, even doesn't have to be fucking quarterback every year. And I think and Nebraska one, might come is, out and give him a show. He is sure. the week one Heisman favorite, yeah. in my opinion. As of week one, after week one, he's the, my yeah. favorite already. But we'll see after the couple weeks. Yeah, but Doc, we said Nebraska is going to. Come in for a show with Matt Rule, you know, new coach out there. They didn't look too they're good past, dude. in Minnesota, but they're, yeah, but they're past their own Willie Taggart era, so they're trying to rebuild that fucking what, what was his name? Scott? I know Scott Frost. Frost. They yeah, Scott they've been Frost. in a Willie oh Taggart God. era. They were in Willie Taggart era before Scott Frost. They they've been shit for a while now. They were hot when they came time. to the Big Ten and quickly, quickly went downhill and just lost all credibility. I mean, they were historically a powerhouse team in the Big Twelve and just have been absolutely dumped on in the Big Ten. So uh I'd like to see them I'd like to see them step it up because honestly the Big Ten is the next one that's kind of going downhill. Uh I mean, Michigan's strong, Ohio State's strong, Penn State is, is you know, better better most years than not, but um, they've still had some ups and downs. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's kind of a weak division. Michigan State has fallen off. Rutgers and Maryland ain't, ain't shit, ain't going to be shit. Illinois ain't shit, ain't going to be shit. You know, it's this is, this is really turning into a fucking weak division. But we got some new faces coming, so we'll see. It, it was shocking, though, with Nebraska. I know we're talking about the Pac-12 but, and Colorado, but Nebraska coming into the Big Ten, they were – their last year in the Big 12, they were in the Big 12 championship, lost by a field goal, like lost by three points to Oklahoma, and then they hit a wall and then just shit the bed. For Maybe years, they should be I going to see USA. Yeah. But the Pac 12, the boys yeah. in general, like let's get back to them real quick. The Pac 12, they're scary. I mean, you have Washington, who looks good. Michael Penix Jr. looked like a dog. Bo Nix in Oregon, I know, is a cupcake game, but damn, they put 80 plus points on their opponent. Dude, poor that was Sandoc. that poor mascot. That. 547 push-ups. I don't know if I've ever the fucking mascot. I don't know if I ever watched a game that was 80 plus points for a college football game. But I mean, biggest stat of the day: first team or first conference since 1932 to win out in the opening week. That's phenomenal, man. I mean, impressive. Every team won. I mean, I get you know you're gonna have that when you don't play any interconference. Obviously, you know if you have a, a conference game going on week one, that's that's not gonna happen. But regardless to come out with all your teams one week one i mean that's huge and that that's a show of force and like i said before i mean i'm excited to see what the pac-12 can bring them uh, i think that this is going to be a very fun conference to watch yeah. all year uh, as i said earlier a lot of explosive offense um you know hopefully we can see the defense match oregon i know got the defense <laughs> um i'm hoping utah got the defense this year uh Husky, question, Husky's got a good yeah Husky's, Husky's got, good got the defense. defense some question marks with usc on defense but um Overall, I mean, this conference, it's nice to finally see Pac-12 relevant again because they, they used to be so much the, fun to walk. They might beat the shit out of each other so that no one might not make the playoffs for this conference. Yeah. That's why the 12-man benefits it. But DJ, DJ Yogolo, whatever his name is, from Clemson, he went to Oregon State. He had a good game too. You know, he, he got a win before uh, in his first year with Oregon State before Clemson did. So shout out to you as well. I mean, dipped out on Clemson mm. and – yeah. Rightfully so, they, he, they they benched his ass. But hey, this year for the big uh, for Pac-12, I I usually turn off Pac-12 games. They're, they're so late, uh, being in the Central Time Zone. So I think to be some late nights watching some Pac-12 football for us this year. Uh, like there's that YouTube nine, TV nine, nine nine p.m. ten p.m. kickoffs. Oh, it's gonna be it's gonna be some late nights watching Pac-12 football. But I'm excited for it. It's about time they're good in their last year. Don't worry. Next year they won't be. There will only be two teams there, so you'll have a no no hard time watching the ACC and the Big Ten. And yeah, they're all coming to the Central. So. Some, some normal, yeah, coming to the Central East times. Coast. But uh, yeah, I don't know, Chris. I, I think the Pac-12 is legit this year. That they, they might 
I know the SECs in the Big Ten, they're going to get all all the, the the riders on there, the dick riders, because of the success in the last couple of decades. But the Pac-12 might make a, a case this year to be that best conference. Yeah, I know. They're looking phenomenal, winning out. Great. I, hey, it sucks that Pac-12 is leaving, you know? Isn't so that funny? Year that, <laughs> yeah, the year 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 that they might ball. pop off. <laughs> they were pretty good last year, too. Like They had, they had six, six or seven solid teams, but – you know, like like Luke said, a lot of people are falling asleep on the East Coast, so they're not watching it too much. Yeah. But something that we all watched, let's dive into it for a few minutes. You know, Ohio, Ohio State, the defense looked good. But the offense, Marvin Harrison only had two catches. I wouldn't say that's his fault. Kyle McCord and the offense couldn't get together. Are, are we worried, boys? I know it's Indiana. I know it's week one. They have a couple cupcake games to get ready before they go to South Bend to face the Irish. Will the Ohio State offense get it together before the Fighting Irish? Will they keep it together during the Fighting Irish in a couple weeks? Yeah, I mean, McCord, look, he, I, he looked rough out there. And not only is that the scary part, the offensive line looked very rough. And that that's supposed to be Ohio's bread right there is their O-line. So, I mean, they McCord was under pressure most, most of the game. He just looked out of sync with his wide receivers. I think this was like the third or fourth only game for, under um, Ryan Day where they didn't have a passing touchdown. And when you have pretty much the best wide receivers in college football and not having a passing touchdown, it does not look very good. But the run game looked phenomenal. So, Yeah, it did. I, if, I'm, if I'm Marvin Harrison, I'm pissed, though, because the run game he had a touchdown call, but he's at Ohio State. Ohio where? State. I mean, that was – that was the only thing that was clicking for him was the run game. Compared I mean, to I the guess, passing game. I guess game? you can say it was consi- consistent, but I wouldn't say it was a great. Their leading rusher was 8 for 57. I mean, a good 7.1 average, but then you got 12 of 47, 7 of 25. I mean, I, I wouldn't say the run game was, was special. I thought the run game was actually their weak point. I mean, you had some problems passing the ball and, and getting open, but I think the problem was was the rush game. They didn't have the rush game to set the tone and, and open up the passing game. I, think, I mean, it's I think 31 for 143. <clears throat> yeah, I think the run game looked better than passing game, but the run game wasn't, and that's just due to their offensive line not doing as good yeah. as everyone thought they no, were yeah. to do. I'll give you. I mean, either way, the offense just in general looked like shit, which is so yeah. strange to see from Ohio State. This is usually one of the most uh, most entertaining ones to watch in all college football every single game. So, well, it's like I said in the in the you know before. Before the show, I mean, Indiana's like that sneaky team that can sometimes come in and they'll they'll go one and eleven, you know. But but they they fucking held it down against Ohio State and they they locked it up, you know. I mean, I've seen it against Illinois when they were ranked. I've seen it, you know. I mean, across the board, Indiana is just that sneaky team that can come in and surprise you. They won't win. They will. They will never win these games. But they'll just keep it close and and put a lot of question marks up for for big time teams. Yeah, I mean, they better get together, though, Luke, before they play the Irish because the Irish looks pretty legit. Hartman looks good, like Chris mentioned a couple episodes ago. But Marvin Harrison, like I said, if, if I'm him, I'm pissed because two catches from arguably the best receiver in college football, you know, he was a phenomenal receiver last year. So we know what he's capable of if there's a quarterback that's actually decent back there. And and like Doc said, too, it's strange not seeing Ohio State light up the scoreboard. It doesn't matter who I've seen them. They throw anybody back there. I remember that Cardell Jones. And oh, what JT Barrett, th- these guys were mm. slinging the rock back then, so like, dude, Cobb Accord better get together before he gets his ass on the bench for, for Devin Brown. Yeah, I, I, I'm not super high on Ohio State this year. I think Ryan Day will get it figured out and they'll have a pretty good season, but I still I, I don't think they're gonna win the Big Ten this year, so I'm, I'm not super high on them. They, they always lose a lot of players to the draft, and I, it doesn't look like I, kind of sucks for Ryan Day that he's on the hot seat, but he, he really is on the hot seat, especially if he drops another a third loss in Michigan. So if he if he loses that game to Michigan, he's well, probably out. I don't know. If Jim Harbaugh, Harbaugh is still in fucking Michigan, yeah. I don't think Ryan Day is going anywhere anytime soon. He's he's still kind of fresh in the seat. Yeah, um, I think his seat's warming up. I don't think so because he's still winning. He's he's still putting up a fight. He's still winning. Um, you're not talking about, you know, 
uh, Jim Harbaugh falling yeah. below expectations and, and barely even coming out with a winning season, fighting just for a bowl game, let alone, you know, a playoff appearance. So I think Ryan Day's got plenty of time. I think he's got plenty up his sleeve. Um, I think it's just like you said, they lose a lot of players to the draft. It's just getting that offense together and clicking. Um, defense looks solid. I mean, anytime you hold the team to three points, I don't give a shit who it is. You know, it's a solid game on defense. You held the quarterback uh, on the on the opposing side to 58 yards. You know what I'm saying? I mean, defense showed up. Now it's just a matter of, of figuring out, you know, Marvin Harrison had two catches. Why? I mean, do you have a problem getting open or, you know, the quarterback just didn't see him down the field? Offensive line just let the pressure to, uh, through too soon. So, you know, it's – it's just a matter of, of finding the weak spots and 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 bringing everything together. Yeah, it's, it's why these teams schedule these fairly easier teams usually. Get that nice little preseason game almost, a little warm-up game. Figure out the UCF, issues they have. Uh, Who's Ohio State got UCF. next week? Or this week? Uh, they have two games that are like they're, – they're, oh. I know there's just town state. Games. You're going to see 50, yeah. 60 points in that one. So now we're going to overreact when Kyle McCord drops 350 for like three touchdowns. And we're like, bench oh, by the, bench bench at the end of the first half. Yeah. yeah. Kyle McCord figured out. Like, I don't want to overreact to that neither. But like, it, I mean, yes, I want to see some growth with, I mean, I preferably don't want to see growth. I, don't, I can't say Ohio State, but like, I want to see Marvin Harrison do good. I want to see what this kid can do. I want to see him, you know, exceed his father's expect you know what his father did i want to see him pass his dad i love marvin harrison but to see his son do what he's doing i want to see that and is he's young, a qb for that is youngstown even d1 i, I, I wouldn't you, i wouldn't call anything coming together against a team like youngstown state <laughs> hey there's 133 that, that performance, d1 schools bro that performance against indiana is good for 400 yards against youngstown state okay yeah like i said there's 133 d1 schools doc I, Probably couldn't name fucking half of them. If, like if you throw me in the spot That's right sad. now. That's sad. Get it I together. mean, when you only watch with the top 30 teams every single year, and well, unless I'm diving into like these unranked schools, like heavily, like, it's hard. It's college, dude. Like I'm not I could probably like, do at 70. least 75%. Yeah, but you played college football like your whole life, just nonstop, yeah. and you were coached yep. going through each system. So facts. But yeah, we'll keep on Ohio State. We'll see what they can do. You know, old OH out there, IO. So we'll see what they can do. But we have some we have some decent games this week too. Week two, you know, two lane will miss. Are we riding the wave, boys? Oh man, I, I'd love that's to a see tough a, one. I'd love to see a non power five team. You know, ride the wave. They they got that like light blue, greenish fucking field going on and down in New Orleans. I'm I'm about riding the wave. I'd love to see it. Yeah, I'd love love to see the the wave win this one. I mean, but Dart looked phenomenal. I mean, Old Miss, one of the three teams that got seventy plus points. I mean, I I know it's against fucking I don't even know who they played last week. Some fucking <laughs> exactly. Menchu or some shit. But but still, that's the I mean, thing. That's the, when you play a team like that. If you don't put up seventy points, you look like shit. You know what I'm saying? So that's like the expectation. So doesn't matter if you, if you play a shitty team and put up seventy points, like you still played well. Yeah, it's too, I well, mean, too. It's I, I think Tulane was in a close game. I think Tulane was in a close game last. Excuse me, last week. Uh, I mean, twenty points. Yeah, twenty points. I think it was against close. I think it was Southern closer Alabama. early on, though. Yeah, it was closer early on. Is what I think. Was what I was thinking like halftime ish. But, Shout out to Lane's quarterback, only missed one pass. 294 yards on 14 completions and 19.6 average, four scores. Big game. It was, Fucking it was, Michael it was, Pratt, dude. Big Dick Pratt. It was a 10, it was a 10 point difference at half. For, for like Doc said, like if you're not like up by 20 or 30 at the half, that's like a you know, you're not meeting expectations. But I don't know. I, I want the wave, I want the wave to be ridden, dude. I want to see Tulane carry it on and beat Ole Miss. I mean, I wouldn't be mad if Ole Miss wins neither. Like, I have nothing against Ole Miss. Oh, but Mercer. It's, it's cool. It's cool to see like a program like 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 Luke said, non power five get in there. I know Luke is a little biased because he came from a non power five, so he still wants his yeah. boys out there. You know, his brothers and sisters out there to 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 kick ass. But I don't know. I'm all about the wave this this year. And if Tulane wins this game, they'll they're probably running in the table. So they'll they'll be in the top ten at the end of the season. They'll probably get one. They'll get that uh, New Year's Six bowl game. At least, well, they had new. Yeah, they had one last year. Yeah, they did. So they'll, they'll get it again this year if they if they beat Ole Miss, and I guarantee they probably run the table after that. Tulane's trying to find their way into a Power Five, dude. They might be going Pac-12 next year. Yeah, they might. I mean, I'm surprised. I'm surprised nobody's trying to get get them yet. 
Pac-12 has been rumored to go after the Mountain West right now. Yeah. It's so, so yeah. bad. Well, that's really about all they got left. It's just Oregon State. Two, two lane, make good. Did you imagine, ACC. Did you imagine ACC. Utah State holding down the Pac-12? Like, they're the fucking – my God. Like two Air Force, ACC fucking today. Air Force, fucking hammering the Pac-12. Two, Tulane could go to ACC if Clemson, yeah. UNC, and, and uh, and Florida State leave. Those are the three teams potentially there. So yeah, well, all eyes throw on that realignment. You never know what's going to happen. The ACC is trying to work, or those three teams are trying to work a way to get out of their deal that they're locked in for a while. So they're just trying to figure out money. But hey, we still got the Battle of Iowa boys, Iowa, Iowa State. You know, that's always a big one week two. Yeah. Iowa got dropped out of the rankings, even though they won, but they got they fell out of the top twenty five. Uh, Iowa had their first uh, passing touchdown in fucking how long? So it's great. It's Bro, they've <laughs> never been an offensive team. <laughs> the amount of times I've watched Illinois Iowa end in nine to six, like what's funny is they produce good tight ends though, like yeah. like actual weapons because they produce corn fed boys. They all just fucking roll down the dirt road over to Iowa, over to Iowa <laughs> University of Iowa, and fucking. Toss hay bales for their for the, the practice and flip tires and fucking pull cattle. Hey, they got some solid defenses over there. So oh, they line yeah, up in the three point stance yeah. for the fucking cattle push. Chris, oh, what both. game are you eyeing though? Out All right. this week. Well, yeah, I the Old Miss and uh, Tulane, Tulane game. I, I mean, and then the Gimme game, Texas and Alabama, of course. We'll talk. Are we ready to talk about that now, or y'all? If you guys want, to yeah, bring... let's, let's let's dive into. Yeah, I mean, big big game, boys. You know, um, I was high last year. Quinn Ewers questionable injury. Um, I I get it. Like he did a jump pass, and he's I saw him doing against Rice, and he needs to cut that shit out because teams like Alabama, them that they don't mind taking a fifteen yard penalty to fucking throw the QB down and fucking break his shoulder. I mean, you're putting yourself in harm's way that way. It's gonna happen. I mean. The, the whole the whole complexity of the game switched. It, it flipped when fucking Quinn Ears got hurt. And then, of course, our backup, he rolled, he got hurt his ankle. A uh, card got hurt. So, you're playing – we're last year playing a second-string QB with our second-string QB that was hurt. We had Bijan Robinson trying to do his thing. Xavier Worley had a good game. He's one of the top receivers in, the, in the college, too. We have a good tight end with, with Sanders out there. I think our O-line struggled against Rice. So, I'm a little nervous with the O-line. They got to keep the fucking D line from Ohio State off of Quinn Ewers because the Quinn Ewers has time. He he can make the throws. I mean, he's a little athletic too. He's a low low key athletic, but big game. It's at Alabama. It's a night game. It's college game day. Fuck Alabama. I know Cruz listening. Fuck him too for this week because mm. Texas is coming. We're coming for that ass. Our horns are going directly up that fucking elephant's <laughs> ass, and we're gonna hook him. We're fucking getting him this week. I don't give a shit. We're gonna win this game. We're going to get in the top 10, and we're fucking back. That's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say it after we beat Alabama, but <laughs> we got to beat them first before we get back. But we're beating Alabama this week. Yeah, I can see Texas being a sneaky win this week. I mean, Alabama opened up against Middle Tennessee, which is great for their offense. I mean, you have a new new quarterback, new offensive coordinator there. So, I mean, they put up, what, 50-something point, 56 to 7 with Middle Tennessee. So, I mean, it was a great game for them, great game for Milrow. I mean, he went 13 for 18, 194 yards and three touchdowns. So, I mean, he had a great game. So, it'd be exciting to see what they do against an actual actual defense, you know. And our defense did look decent shit last on. week. Yeah, I think we're – I don't know about Luke, but I know I know the three of us were high on that. Luke, you – Big 12, you root for the Big 12 for this week? Uh, Yeah. I, I, it's, I mean, it's always great to see Alabama lose a game. Texas lost quite a few games in the last few years. So I'd love to see Alabama lose this game. But, you know, I'll be in the group chat talking shit about Texas pretty much the whole game until Texas actually wins if they win. So, but I love talking a little bit of shit about Texas. Probably going to throw, throw some horns down to you throughout the game. But, I mean, I yeah, I, 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 I'd sure. like to see Texas win this game. Just so many Alabama fucking band riding, like, fans. Like, it's so annoying. I, I, hate, I hate the Alabama fans. I hate yeah, Texas it, fans, but I think I hate Alabama fans more. It's obviously the game of the week, you know, until Alabama shows Texas for what they truly are. And, you know, it's another 56-7 to 7 win. Um, so, you know, yeah, going to be by the way, be they, Hey, by the way, they won last year, 2019, like I said, with a second-string quarterback that was hurt, and they had Bryce Young. 
So I'm giving you shit. That was a fucking cheap know, shot just... that knocked out your quarterback too. That was a fucking dirty cheap shot. I I watched it. I I almost went to that game by the way because I was in Texas and I was just a couple hours away, and it was like my first or second. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was like my I, first I was or second there. weekend. I wish I would have known you then, because I would have gone. Nobody from yeah. from my fucking class wanted to go, so I was like, my first first or second weekend there, I was like, well, I'm not gonna well, just drive up yeah. to Texas Stadium. Did you prices? Yeah. Did you at least check yeah, the prices for the? Yeah, they weren't bad. Uh, they, 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 they weren't bad. I looked at yeah. some of the prices because I was gonna go. I was like, I I ain't paying this for much for fucking. Right, Plus, I, the, I went to the game for before. Texas and so Alabama, they weren't bad. Yeah. Well, I went I went to the well, opening week, uh, Texas and uh, the Raging Cajuns. So I was like, I'm I don't know, man. I, I, told I told Lucas to go that to Austin in general to the bars, you know, and just fucking wait for it. I mean, because if they would have pulled it. it out last year, Austin would have burned to the ground. They would have been a fucking parade out there. And I still think it happens this well, year. If we we win, so. Yeah. And it'd be a good call not to go to that game. So yeah. So no, it's obviously I know it's obviously the game of the week, but I think I think honestly I'm kind of looking at that Georgia ball staking. You know, I think uh, I think there's a lot of potential for upset there. <laughs> And well, we have a and Miami. Georgia. Yeah. And we got a and Miami. You know, we've already mentioned Colorado and Nebraska. We yeah, have some should be a, decent should games be a, this week. Solid yeah. matchup. See if Miami can There's, get things figured out. I think Miami actually might be a tough game. And I, honestly, if I could have one wish granted for me this week, it would be that Notre Dame gets absolutely demolished by NC State. I fucking hate Notre Dame. They're a dog <laughs> shit team. They always will be. Um, that, but no, I, I, they could lose. You could lose to fucking NC State. NC State's not a bad team. NC State is like the NC Indiana too, of, right? of ACC. Yeah, it's, it's NC, at NC State. State. Yeah, yeah. Wolfpack might be coming. Uh, they might be coming. You never know. No, there's honestly there's a lot of good games this week. Uh, Texas A&M and Miami, uh, Appalachian State. We know what they can do. You know what I mean? They got they got Drake May and, and North Carolina. So um, Texas yeah, Alabama, obviously yeah. Oregon, Texas Tech should be fun. Wisconsin, Washington State should be fun. Stanford USC is always a fun fun game to watch. So. Uh, I, I will well, apologize. I, games this week. I will apologize in advance if from seven Eastern to about eleven PM Eastern you don't hear from me because um yeah, I like to not talk a lot during my game. I've learned a lot from my team being up, all my teams being up in football especially and just shit in the bed. So I'm just gonna stay quiet. Yeah, I might fix the special it. Yeah, Chris, if I, you could yeah. if you could text uh, Mark's number to your chaplain, um we as a group would greatly <laughs> appreciate that. Just just so he's on standby, just See, in case. I'm already already getting ready. Get the rope out. You're getting ready. <laughs> oh Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ. Doc. Jesus Christ. <laughs> but no, I mean I'm excited, boys. It's it's time for Texas to you know I like I said I don't blame Sam Elgar for what he said after the Georgia game. You have to say like it's, you know you have to build that confidence and it did not work out in 2020 hindsight. But I believe in Quinn Ears. I believe in this team this year to, to beat Alabama. Steve Sarkeesian knows the ways of Alabama. Let the man get drunk on the sideline. He's a better coach when he's an alcoholic. <laughs> Give that man a fucking beer and let him call a fucking hell of a golf. It's a game plan. Let's Cheers, go buddy. to Texas. Hook them horns, baby. But, hey, let's end the show with um, Caleb Williams' dad. You know, guy's a fucking idiot. I'm a fucking clown. Um. Me and Doc, I know we hammered it in the group chat, but Caleb Williams' dad pretty much came out and said that Caleb Williams could potentially not go to the draft, and if he doesn't, okay, that's good for him. But the reasoning is like, hey, the the draft structure is broken. The, the construction of the draft's broken. Essentially, you're going to go to a shit organization, and it might ruin your career. Blah blah blah. And you know, we're going to wait to see maybe what happens next year. Well, buddy, if you're the first pick next year, you're going to a shit team. Your son's going to be know, on a shit team. You know what was especially funny about that? is he specifically talked about, I talked to Kyler Murray and like Arizona and built a team, but Arizona and, and Cleveland built a team too. The problem was, was the quarterback. So you're sitting here talking about the shitty organization. The problem was the quarterback. They built the fucking team in Arizona and Kyler Murray was distracted. I wouldn't even say he was the full problem. Cliff Kingsbury, I think was, was a lot of the problem in Arizona. Um, but Kyler Murray obviously now is, is a problem. The distractions and just not focus on football, uh, Baker Mayfield was obviously the problem in Cleveland because we saw that again in Tampa Bay and then, or uh, excuse me, in um, Los Angeles. Um, we saw it in in Carolina. Um, so it obviously wasn't the fucking Cleveland Browns. You know what I'm saying? So I just it, that that blows my mind. So you know you know what I want to see happen then? If that's how we're gonna play it, I would love to see him get blackballed because all the teams are just like 
you obviously ain't committed. You're, you're a you guy. You ain't a team guy. You know what I'm saying? So let him go right. undrafted and, and sign as an undrafted free agent for the league minimum and let me know how that fucking wallet feels, you know, uh, because you wanted to be selfish and not, not going to the draft. Every, every, you know, every player's dream is, is to win a championship, right? But do you want to do it because you joined Tom Brady and the Patriots? Or do you want to do it because they built around you and you fucking carried them? You know what I mean? Be a man. Well, how about an organization? Uh, I don't know about Chris. I don't know about you and Luke feel, but like the draft structure to me, like the, the way that it's organized and ran, it's perfect. This isn't college football. This is why I hate college football compared to the NFL. I'll watch college because I love the game, but they expect to have five-star talent around them, superstar talent. So, hey, let's let the Kansas City Chiefs yeah, win. Yeah, it's going there. Yeah, or the next team like that needs a quarterback, whatever, or the next best playoff, whatever, playoff team that needs a quarterback. No, you go to the best – you go to the worst team. It's about balance. It's about fucking being equals. That's the How way do these teams space. get better? How do they get better if they don't have a, if they don't have a shot to get a top draft pick? Exactly. That, that's yeah. why I just – it's if you're talented enough like Peyton Manning, Andrew Luck, uh, Joe Burrow, Trevor Lawrence, these guys are turning around teams. That's just a big Ben. All these guys that have – Matt Ryan, like, you know, he wasn't phenomenal. Like, Justin Fields. Super Bowl. But, yeah, like, <laughs> these guys are, are like, turnaround teams. Two was helping the Dolphins, Justin Herbert with the Chargers. You go to shit organizations and you use your talent and you get them better and they build around you. So I don't know. That I, I, I think I have no issues with the way the NFL does the draft. I think it's as fair as it could possibly be. Like, yeah, the worst team gets the first pick. Like, it's, it's the way it is. The better you play, the fucking worst pick you get. I'm like, sorry, you have the best team. So I, you ever watch ballers? I do. I, I no. watch. Yeah, this reminds me of Ricky Jarrett's dad. Just getting too involved and saying dumb shit, yeah. you know what I mean, and, and fucking running his mouth on Twitter and getting a getting an offer pulled. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it, either way, Caleb Williams is going to go to a shitty organization if he goes to the draft. It's just the way it is. Like he either goes next year or the year after. It's just, it's just what's going to happen. Not everybody's Tom Brady getting fucking... picked up one ninety nine to a to a winning team with Drew Bledsoe and and getting lucky that he broke his you know got hurt and, and you're coming in you know what I'm saying so you know it, it's a rite of passage do what everybody else in the NFL before you has done go to a shit team fucking win but make that Chris, team a winner and Chris if he does sit out or let's say he he goes back to college next year and God forbid he tears the ACL that ruins his his draft stock potentially his money can be ruined now his career let's say he never recovers from that knee surgery. Three to five years later, you get that one contract, and then you're a nobody, and you just ruined your potential NFL career. A lifetime Nick Foles. Yeah. Or yeah, uh, what, what was the fucking dude that went to the Bears to back up from, uh, I think it was Missouri? Chase Daniels. Hey. Lifetime Chase Daniels. Chase Daniels. Yeah. He's on NFL Network. He's on NFL Network now. That man, <clears throat> respect. No, me, I'm like, just, hey, good morning. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not talking. I'm just saying he he's a lifetime backup. But yeah, Chris. I mean, if if he size the weight till senior year, or go back to one more year, that could if he gets hurt, that could ruin him too. I mean, the big thing we've all mentioned was money, and I think the NIL that's that's what this is causing. I mean, the players before NIL they would go to the draft as soon as they could because they wanted that money, and now you're having players get paid more more than some of the fucking NFL players getting paid in college football. So Caleb William has no pressure or rush to make it to the NFL because he's going to get paid regardless. Yeah, it's just you the can't say a little here different though. though. It's a What's lot that? different. Yeah, yeah but you, it, the, it's a lot big, different. Big pay difference still. Like he's probably making a couple million over at USC when he can make twenty, thirty million as a first overall draft pick. Did I y'all mean, see I mean, like, Manning? Manning's getting paid more than Joe Burrow's this year. Well, but Joe, yeah, Joe Burrow's only getting like six million. Uh, I think Manning's getting like seven or eight or something like that. Yeah, yeah Manning's, like, Manning's like, kind of he's kind of an outlier because of his name. I don't Speaking know of NIL, name. Talking about hype. Speaking well, of NIL, did y'all see this? Because the of the name. <laughs> yeah, it's a no, it's, I mean, it's about the name, but it's also about what he what he put up stat wise in Louisiana. His stat his stats weren't Newman. even good though. His stats weren't he even good. He broke all though. the records at Newman. Their records weren't good to. Anyways, so he broke bad records. Like they, he broke, he broke his... Peyton and Eli. That's like Sanders breaking yeah, records at, at Colorado. How hard is that really? But like, but if he wasn't a Manning and he did that at Louisiana, I don't think anyone gives a shit. That's that's the thing. It's like, like, like yeah, those are... Texas want to drop fucking quarter million on recruiting him. 
<laughs> they paid like a, they paid a bunch for of visit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for a visit, dude. Imagine having they, they probably paid for some of his burgers too, like fucking Jim Harbaugh was doing, but you know, <laughs> fucking stupid that Harbaugh shit. Free Jim Harbaugh. That's yeah. what I hear. Hey, also Nick Bosa signed. I know it's NFL talk, but signed. He will be at the game Sunday. Five year, hundred and seventy million dollar contract, getting thirty four million dollars a year, hundred and twenty two point five guaranteed. All right, I Master know that. Donald. I know they had to ruin Kenny Pickett's day. <laughs> He's thinking maybe Bosa doesn't play. He's like, man, my knees might be good for this one. <laughs> yeah, Steelers I, I still win. Got a fucking or the fucking left tackle or this fucking offensive lineman. Like, God damn it, I gotta fucking play this Pittsburgh. guy now. Pittsburgh still but, wins. But speaking of NILs, did y'all see the solid NIL deal that Gervin Dexter, Bears second round draft pick, uh, signed while he was at Florida? No, I didn't see his. No. He signed. I don't. I don't remember what the name of the company was. I know it was BLA for short, out of Delaware, or Connecticut, or some shit. He signed a deal, and this is why laws are in place. Like Florida passed a law about NIL deals and everything that's not supposed to extend past the player's time in college. This motherfucker signed a deal for like four hundred and thirty or four hundred eighty thousand dollars a one time payment in exchange for fifteen percent of his pre tax earnings for the next twenty five years in any football related activities. Jesus. So his first contract that he got for being a second round pick, a million of it has to go back to this company just on the first deal. Damn, man. Hey, you got a bunch of lawsuits. Yeah, bunch of lawsuits going on, man. This is where the NIL deal starts to have a problem, man, because now they got him for his likeness. He has to sign so many autographs, make appearances. This guy, Gervin had to get him a fucking a pass to the NFL draft and the draft activities. Yeah, nothing, nothing better than General Booty with Rock'em Socks making some underwear. Oh my God. <laughs> Jesus. That's the name of that's, that, that's what NIL is all about right there. That's for like $435,000 or something. <laughs> that's one of the top top names of college football. I think Kool Aid. I can't think of his name. His last McKinstry? name. Yeah, yeah he should sign a Kool Aid. Yeah. He should sign with Kool Aid, man. Like, he's, he, well, no, he's, cool, he's, so I, I looked he, him up. Kool Aid ain't even his real first name, dude. No, Kool Aid's got a uh, air conditioning fucking <laughs> NIL. Yeah, dude. but it's not but even his legal cool. first name. <laughs> I don't give a shit. It's still a good name, man. Hey, ha ha, Clinton Dix. You know what I'm saying? That was hey, a good one too. Yeah. Alabama Booty, loves yeah. Al- Alabama loves those those players with good names, man. You know, both of them in <laughs> Alabama, ha ha, and, and Kool Aid. So, but boys, uh, I did a great episode once again. You know, I listened to last night, phenomenal episode, loved it. Hey, college is back this week again. We you know we have some yes! games, we have a we have a game tomorrow. Not really gonna watch it because the Chiefs and Lions play. So, but good luck to all your guys' teams. I know the three of your guys' teams will win, no doubt, this week. So, congrats on the early win, boys. Mm. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Shout out real quick, though. Texas winning. Any of y'all say yes? Like, if I say Texas winning. Uh, 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 next Chris? year. Next year, I'm definitely taking Texas. One Manning's ready to go. One Manning's in the saddle ready to go. Yeah, we don't play Man. them next year, but okay. Man, Manning's a if, third string quarterback. Were, it's hard. I mean, if y'all were playing in Texas, I'd give it to you. But, I mean, playing in Tuscaloosa at night. It's a tough stadium to play in. Don't um, get me wrong. I'm nervous. I wouldn't be surprised if we lose, obviously. I wouldn't be shocked, but I got to pick, I got to pick the heart here. I'm, I'm, I'm going Longhorns. So it's, it's my team. I don't, well, I don't blame you. Alabama but... covers, though. The I don't know, man. Be ringing. After watching last year and seeing like poor refereeing, and you know, I've never been, I've never been the one that's like, oh man, these refs are just trying to help this team out or whatever. The NBA is where you see it the most, but in college, I mean, I can, definitively say that there was one team that I was like, man, they are really pressing for this team to stay good when they should be losing all these games. And that's Alabama because Alabama should have lost the game against you guys should have lost the game against Texas a and I mean, they should have lost a handful of games last year that a lot of poor refereeing and poor calls, missed calls against Alabama calling bull. Like when y'all's quarterback got taken out, dude, that, that should have been a penalty right off the rip. I, like not only I did you guys lose a man, but I, you didn't even get the penalty for it. I thought that they called a penalty. Did they pick it up? I mean, I thought they threw the flag. I'm not 100 percent sure. I know there was a question call with uh, Bryce Young in the end zone too, where there was there was a Texas. huge pass interference that they missed against y'all, or that they called, I think, on Texas. The safety was the big, or the non-safety that, or the safety. Yeah, it was a safety that we got, where it was a pick six at first, whatever. Um, so shit happens, you know. You you move on. That's 2022. This is 2023. 
We're not in Austin for this game. We're going to be Alabama, and we're going to wipe the floor with Alabama. Go Longhorns. Hook them horns, baby. That's Chris Kim Mark Davis. Hook them horns, baby. This is all at the Boss Podcast, and we are out. Thank you for checking out another episode of All About the Balls Podcast. We want to thank all of our listeners and supporters of the Sack House. You can listen to the show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe and give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram at the Sack House.